Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So now we will continue solving problems on bolted connections. So let us start. The bearing type connection is subjected to a tensile load as shown. The plates are 25 mm thick. The material strengths of the plates are 248 MPa and F sub U equals 400 MPa. Use ASD. Find the maximum value of the tensile load, T, that may be applied based on the tensile yielding of the plate. Okay, so first we will solve the capacity of the plate based on tensile yielding. So we can analyze any of the plates since they are the same. So the formula for tensile yielding is T sub N equals F sub Y AG. So we can solve first for the AG or the gross area. We get the total width that is simply twice of S3 and S4. So F3 is simply equal to 50. And then S4 is 150. So therefore, we can multiply this by 25 to get the area or the gross area. So we have... That is 10,000 square millimeters. So we can now solve the nominal strength for tensile yielding. So that is 248 times the gross area. So we can divide it by 1,000 to obtain the capacity in kilonewton. So that is 2,480 kilonewton. So this is now the nominal strength. So to get the allowable capacity using, a, using ASD, we just divide this by the factor of safety. So that is 2480 divided by 1.67. So we have 1485.02994 kilonewton. To get the maximum tensile load that can be applied, so take note that tensile load in question is the demand, so meaning it is the force being applied to the plate. We just compare the demand versus the capacity. To obtain a safe design, the demand should be less than the capacity. So we have solved already for the capacity, and that is 1485.02994. And based on the figure, the demand on one plate is T. Therefore, T should be less than 1485 kN. So that the plate will not fail in tensile yielding. So this is already the answer. And the answer is letter B. Problem 2. Find the maximum value of the tensile load T that may be applied based on the tensile rupture on the net area of the plate. In getting the capacity based on rupture on net area, let's say we are analyzing the upper plate so we will be considering the net area along the first line of the box we will now compute the net area in this section so how do we compute the net area based on excerpts from the code so we can compute the net area by the following the net area of a member is the sum of the products of the thickness and the net width of each element. We just multiply the net width by its thickness. In computing net area for tension and shear, the width of a bolt hole will be taken as 2 mm greater than the nominal dimension of the hole. Okay, so in getting the width of the bolt hole, we will add another 2 mm on the nominal dimension of the hole. Based on the problem, the bolt's diameter is M24. The corresponding hole dimension is 27 millimeters. We will use the standard hole size because it is not indicated in the problem the kind of holes we have. So the basic assumption is that we always assume that it is of standard holes. So therefore, the Nominal hole is 27 millimeter. So we can now compute the net area. We get the total width. That is simply the sum of S3 
MS4, and then we times we multiply it by 2. 2 times 50 plus 150. So this is now the total weight. We have to subtract the diameter of the hole. So minus how many holes do we have on this path? All in all, we have three holes. And then the diameter of the hole is 27 based from the table. And then based on the code excerpt, we will add another 2 millimeter when computing for net area for tension and shear. So we add another 2 millimeter. So this is now the net width. And then after that, we multiply this by the thickness of the plate, which is 25. So this is now the net area of the plate. So therefore, the net area is 7825 square millimeters. And then we compute the effective net area. For the effective net area, that is U times A sub N. U is the shear lag factor. For plates that are bolted like this, so meaning the complete cross section of the plate is resisting the load. So, shear lag phenomenon will not take place. So, we will just consider a value of 1.0 for the shear lag factor. Then we multiply this by the net area. So, this is now 7825 square millimeters. By the way, we have a code provision wherein the computed net area should not be greater than 85% of the gross area. So by the way, this code provision is only used for bolted splice plates. So we can determine if the plates are splice plates by reading it on the problem. So if it is indicated in the problem that the plates are splice plates, so we should check on this code provision. But if the problems are not bolted splice plates, this code provision is not being used. Okay? So for this problem, it is not indicated that the plates are splice plates. So it is okay not to use this code provision. But... In the case that the problem is bolted splice plates, so we should check. For example, we have already computed the net area, and that is 7825. So we have to compare it with the 85% of the gross area. Take note that we have already computed the gross area before, that is 10,000. So therefore, this is 85. In the case that the problem is bolted splice plates, our net area still have met the code provisions because the net area computed is less than the 85% of the gross area, which is 8,500. So 7,825 is a valid value of the net area. So in the case that the net area is greater than 85% of the gross area, we will not use that net area and we will proceed on using the 85% of the gross area. But take note, this code provision is only used if we have a voltage splice plates connection. So we can now compute the nominal strength based on tensile rupture. That is F sub U times A sub E. We have already computed the A sub E. So F sub U is given as 400. A sub E is 7825. Therefore, we can now solve for the nominal strength, and that is 3,130,000 newton. So we divide this by 1,000, and we can have the nominal strength in kilonewton. So to get the allowable strength, just divide this by the factor of safety. The factor of safety for tensile rupture is 2, and this is now 1,565 kilonewton. So now we compare the demand of the plate versus its capacity. So the demand is simply T, and we have already computed for the capacity. This is now the allowable value of T, such that tensile rupture will not govern or will not occur. And that is letter, that is letter B.